everyone. I've got a great tutorial for you this month on using uh, the uh, quick selection tool uh, to extract uh, people from backgrounds. Uh, a lot of people love doing composites these days, and one of the critical parts of doing a composite is getting the subject uh, extracted nicely out of their background to put them onto the new background. Now, uh, a quick word about this. Uh, the sample I'm going to be doing here is on a gray background. For me, I think gray um, is the easiest to, to go ahead and pull someone off of. Um, if I know that they're going to be, I'm placing them onto white, for example, I might um, photograph them on white. Uh, but generally, gray is the most general purpose one to use. Now, if you've got pictures that have, were done somewhere else, maybe in front of a wall or in a busy scene or something like that, it's obviously, obviously going to be a little more difficult to do, but the same principles will apply to what we're doing here. I'm just going to show you this uh, on a, a relatively easy extraction just to show you the steps uh, and the tools and uh, so we can get through it relatively quickly. So, Anyways, uh, I've got a... Uh, an athlete here that I'm going to try and extract. I have photographed her on a gray background. And the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to the quick selection tool. Right here you see it's in the same palette as the magic wand. We want the quick selection tool. Up top here we want to make sure we've got auto enhance clicked. Um, I've got my brush size at about 14. It needs to be a hard brush. And we're going to click on the very first one right here. Now all we have to do is go through the image and you know what actually I'm going to make this a little bit larger to about 30. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically start dragging my pen around the areas that I want to keep. And it's going to pick up some stuff like I can see right here it's already picked up this gray that we don't want. That's okay. We're going to we'll go back and fix that later. Now you'll notice here she doesn't have shoes on. Uh, the piece that I'm putting together uh, with this, the, the bottom part of her will be cropped out so I wasn't worried about the shoes. In case you're wondering about that. There we go. Okay, so now I've basically got all of her. i got a little bit more than what I need. Uh, one thing I will do is if I hold down my Option key, it turns to a negative. You can also go up here and just click the minus button that way, but the uh, it's a little bit faster if you use your option key. And I just go like that, and I go like that. And again, it's added some stuff here. We're going to have to go back and fix, but we've basically got it how we want. Now, one thing you need to watch out for is when you've got lettering like this, if you look closely, you can see there's some areas here that it did not select. So you want to, whenever you've got some lettering or white patches, like that's a place that would normally happen right there on the pants as well. But I'm just going to make one more pass across there. So I got it. Okay, now let's zoom in a little bit so we can see some of these areas that it messed up on, like right here. So I'm going to go back to my tool here. I am going to switch the brush down smaller to about half that size. We'll go down to about 14. And I am just going to, same thing, drag through this green area until I have it. Looks like there's a tiny piece up here I missed. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, missed one more here. You kind of got to look around. You can always go back and fix some of this later, but it's best if you figure it out right off the bat. Now the hair up here, um, you can see I've got the, the main part of the hair in dark, and I've got some of these little wisps out here that I didn't bother selecting. We're going to grab that in just a second. Just get a little more of that here. Um, the normally a lot of times I would probably go through and retouch some of this out because it looks a little messy but just to show you how much detail we can get on the extraction I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there and we'll see if we can keep some of these little wisps of hair in as we do our extraction so anyways I'm just looking through here making sure we didn't miss any other areas. See, I missed a little bit of white right there so come along there up oh, sometimes that happens you get too much just hold down the option key paint it back out up here. Okay. Oh, this is the white here. Just like that. And this is kind of a tedious process, but that looks pretty good right there. All right, good. So now we've got her basically selected how we want. The next step you're going to do 
is uh, make sure that you are still here. Got the uh, selection tool clicked. And then here, up, you're going to go up to Refine Edge. Just going to bring up this box here. You've got several different ways you can view this. A lot of times I like to do the black on white. Uh, only downside to that is you can't see what it is you're actually working on. So sometimes you can switch to reveal layer. And the shortcuts for these are K and R. So a lot of times I'll have uh, my pinky on the R key and uh, my finger on the K. And that way I can switch back and forth between them. I see I need to work here. Then I go there to see what, it, what the actual mask looks like. Go there, like that. So a lot of times I will switch back and forth between those views just using that. I'll show you my basic settings that I have on here. I've got the smart radius checked. And I've got the radius somewhere around 5. Um, you know, sometimes you can go much higher and it really brings out a lot of detail. But uh, I think it can sometimes get you in trouble. So I'm going to leave it down 5.8. I've got the smoothing at 1, feathering at a half pixel. Contrast is at 4%, just a tiny bit. And then shift edge is at negative 7. It's basically pulling that edge back in just a little bit to keep you from having um, fringes and halos around the edge. I've got decontaminate colors checked and it's set at 50%. I also like to have it on a new layer with a layer mask. I want it to create a whole new layer for me. So um, that's how I have my basic setting set up. And then all we have to do now is go back in here with this brush and paint in places where uh, we need a little more fine tuning. For example, right up here. Let's see if we can use this. Click on this uh, magnifying glass here a little closer so we can see what we're doing here. back to the brush. Okay, like this area right here. So I'm going to, let me switch back to K. There we go. I'm going to, it's important that you start out here in the black, drag in and paint the area. So I'm going to start out here, drag in, paint along there up to the top, the ear. We'll just go on and down this whole side here. I think there might have been a little hair there too. Let go. It takes a second. There you go. You can see it's brought a ton of detail back in the hair. So let's work on this side. Take a look at what we have. Big loop of hair there. All kinds of little frizzies through here. So I'm going to start out here. Drag in. Get all that. I don't remember how much there was, but I want to make sure I get it all. And there we go. Definitely pulling out a lot more of that detail in there. Um, and it looks like it's actually cutting in a little bit into the shoulder here, which I can go back and fix on the mask uh, at some point. That stuff's easy to do. Uh, it's more the hair that I'm really concerned with right now. But you can see we're getting a lot of detail in there. So once you've got it about how you want it, let's take one more look at her, make sure there's nothing else we want. Looks like it's got some of that up there. We can try and get a little more up at the top, just to get a little more detail up there. There we go. And uh, wait till it finishes thinking. Hit OK. There we go. Now she's sitting uh, by herself on the uh, already masked so we can't see behind her anymore. And if you look over here in your layers, here the image is still right here, but we've got a mask there that is um, hiding all that background. So that's nice. For example, if we want to go in, we can switch to that mask. And we know right here we've got a little bit of a problem. We can see it's disappeared on us a little bit. I can just switch to a, uh, a white brush and come in and just color that in a little bit if I need to. And that looks pretty good. We'll take a look at it when we actually drop it into the, I got my opacity down too low, there we go. There we go, we'll see what that looks like when we drop it actually into the background. So there we go, got that there. I will bring in a background right here of a track. Then all I have to do is come right here on my layer palette grab this layer and drag it onto the track. So let's jump in here and take a look at what we have. Color her in our scene. There we go. And if we come in here a little bit closer, we can see that we've actually still got all these little wisps of hair along here, which again, I would probably clean up uh, some of those, but if you want them, there's some little hairs there, and so it really gives it a nice look through there. The shoulder looks okay. I could probably even come in and paint on that mask a little bit if I wanted to. And that's the thing. If you come back later and realize you missed something, it's just a matter of making sure you have the mask selected over here 
and then coming back with a white brush and painting it. Um, and if you go too far like that, you just switch back to the black brush and erase it away. Same thing with these little uh, flyaways. If we decide we don't want them, we can just mask them out with, with black, just like that. And that gives us just enough of the little wispy hairs to uh, make it look realistic, but not uh, too sloppy. So that looks actually pretty good. And then we just go on and add the next person, however we're going to do it. And of course, you're going to have to worry about things like making sure that the uh, the uh, the tone matches, that uh, if you've got a really warm background, you want the subject to look warm, you want the, the colors to seem to match up. And so... Uh, that's a kind of a whole nother animal, but as far as making the extractions here, we got a pretty clean extraction. I think that looks pretty good. So that's uh, just kind of a quick look at how to use that tool, and I hope that helps some. Give it a try. I would suggest starting with a, a simpler extraction off of white or gray until you kind of get used to using the tool, and then uh, maybe advance up to doing some tougher extractions and uh, go from there. But I hope that helps, and I wish you the best of luck, and I'll see you soon.